Hey guys, my name is Troy. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a really exciting tag, the Halloween Town book tag. So first, I just want to thank everyone for your support lately. It makes me just feel so successful and so loved. So <laughs> thank you so much. Second of all, I have actually been making a lot more reading progress lately on the physical side because I actually am setting time during the day to read. Like I just discovered that, like you can actually read during the day and it works. Third of all, this is such an exciting tag for me because Peyton Reads herself tagged me in the description of her video. Peyton reads her icon and technically I asked to be tagged like on her Twitter or whatever But still I am in the description of Peyton reads video my booktube idol my icon the booktube goddess Herself I feel so included in the booktube community. Oh my gosh Make sure to leave a like subscribe and let's just jump straight into it I've had way too long of an intro. All right number one Halloween town name a fictional place you wish were real honestly if I had to pick one fictional place, it would have to be the Elven Cities from Keeper of Lost Cities by Shanna Messenger. Like, there is no doubt about it. I have to pick this one because Keeper of Lost Cities is just such a special world and like the Lost Cities and just the whole Elven community and the culture is so freaking cool. I just love getting to experience like this whole new world basically when I read this story and just have, being an elf, but like the elves would have to be in it because the elves with their special powers and like if I could like be an elf and like be immortal and have these powers and like live in this sparkling city that's just like perfection, like this city, these elven cities are literally perfection. So I would just want to be here, you know? From the technology, from the people in there, from just like the beauty and the crystals and the light and just the advancement of it all and just like the beauty of it all, like I just need to be here, like I need to be there right now, like someone get me on a bus ticket get me a plane ticket to this world if you're an elf watching this like take me to your place i don't know what i'm saying number two marnie name a book about witches and i don't really know who these characters are so we're just gonna go with it but i do have a book about witches that i'm going to be reading on halloween which is about the Witches by Roald Dahl, and I've talked about this a lot on my channel, but let me just give you like a really good summary because I feel like I haven't given you guys a good summary yet of this book. It's basically about this world where there are witches who are trying to eat kids. We follow this grandson and this grandma who have several encounters with witches throughout their lives, and basically their mission is to defeat the witches. So one year their grandma starts getting ill and they have to go to this hotel because she can't really take care of herself anymore, and they actually find out that the Grand Witch Meeting, like this Grand Witch is the mightiest witch ever. She has magical powers and stuff. Um, and she is like organizing meeting about how to like basically eat more kids and like get rid of kids because that's the witch's mission. They are meeting in that same exact hotel. And so when something happens to the grandmother's grandson, the grandson and the grandmother have to kind of team up to defeat the witches once and for all with this really, really funny plot. Also another book about witches that I just read was The Girl Who Drank the Moon by, I keep forgetting who the author is. Like her name is just so forgettable. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I love this book as well. There's only one witch in it, but like it just had even more spooky vibes probably than the first one, especially like as the second half went on. And then there's also just more magical stuff that kind of associated with witches because the witches in this one were more like contemporary. And then the witches in The Girl Who Drank the Moon was more fantasy-ish. So yeah, I loved both. And I have even more stories about witches. Um, and you can actually get like a lot of like Halloween picture books, which I know are like for children or whatever, but like they still have the same feel. Like they're still valid. Like I know there's um, several... Uh, which is which books that I read when I was a child like picture books like there was one about this broom and it was so cool I don't know. Anyways, let's get on to the next question number three Sophie name your favorite Middle grade book should I share should I share the fun details? I don't know I might as well just for just for the video all right, now this necessarily isn't like my favorite middle grade because I just have so many favorites, but I do want to share something exciting. But basically in the mail yesterday, I got the whole Land of Stories series. So let's talk about it. I cannot hold up all these books at once. So maybe we can just do this. But yeah, as of like right now, I think this might be my favorite middle grade series just for like what I'm like currently reading. Okay, things are falling. Oh, all my books are falling. <laughs> This is actually like a heavy problem of being a booktuber. You just drop so many books and they always always get damaged. But yeah, here's the um, Land of Stories book. If you guys can see it in all of its glory. I got the whole set 
um, for like, a, I think it was like $25 or something. So it was a really good deal on Amazon. And okay, look at this map. First of all, love the map. It's so, so pretty. But yeah, just the whole Land of Story series is really, really good. A great middle grade that I would definitely recommend because it's a story where the main characters travel to this world where all the fairy tales are real. So they are given this quest to go to Rapunzel's Tower, to Red Riding Hood Kingdom, and go meet Cinderella. And like, they have to do a bunch of stuff to collect magical items to get back into the real world. And then just throughout the series, it gets even even more like cooler as like even whole different worlds of fairy tales even kind of collide and like it's just so cool. Like I cannot wait to reread this magical fantasy series. Um, and actually, if I did have to pick a favorite middle grade series, it would not be Keeper Lost Cities because I don't really classify it as middle grade. But like really middle grade, I would probably say The Unwanted's books. Um, right there, that'll probably be my favorite middle grade series. But I also wanted to talk about Land of Stories there. So yeah, sorry. Number four. Dylan, name a book with a magical school. Okay, let's talk about The Unwanted's then, because we got like a little bit of a mismatched questions here, but um, The Unwanted's does have a magical school, but it's so unique. Like, it's actually a lot different than a lot of the magical schools you'll see, like Harry Potter, or even Foxfire from the Keeper Lost City series. Like, it's actually very different and unique. In this world, The Unwanted's that are like sent to their deaths because they're creative, because creativity is a weapon in High Pristine Juice- High Pristine- <laughs> High Ju High Priest Julene's- or Justine's- High Priest Justine's um, eyes. She thinks that creativity is a- kind of like a danger so she sends all the people that have creativity to their death but basically we find out that mr today who is a close relative to high priest justine she kind of defies her and makes this whole world where all the creative people can go and they can you know live their life as creative people and they can go through art and they can you know do they can explore their passions like of like writing art singing, dancing, theater, like all those like different art elements. So in this whole world that Mr. Today has, there is this school basically, and that is on the mansion. It's like a mansion, but it has like classes inside of it. And so like the students inside get to go to their classes. And then like through the mansion, there's these like tubes basically that like they can go to like different like places in the mansion, like the um, lounge or the theater or like different places. And then there's magical statues and a lot of just like magical, like fun, unique, creative, things, Lisa McMahon herself would be a perfect place to act, or like a perfect person to actually go into this world because she is such a creative in like writing this book. Like it's just everything to me. It's just like one of my favorite middle grades, as I said, and the school and just like the mansion and the whole like estate, basically this whole magical estate is just like amazing. So yeah, I definitely recommend this book if you're looking for like a fun, magical, unique story that you're gonna love. Grandma Aggie, that sounds like a cool character. Name a book that helps you escape into a brand new world. I am loving these questions. Like, by the way, like a Peyton, if you are actually watching this, which would be like, you know, you have some great questions. So let's see here. What's a good, mm, what's a good world that helps you escape? Okay, for this question, I picked Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. I just love the series and I obsess over it. I have to like brush my hair there because it looks weird. Anyways, yeah, I just love this series so much. Sarah J. Mass is able to create such great worlds, just like the scape of them. Like if I show you guys the map, um, it'll seem small, but like once you get into the series and you kind of just like go with Selena on her travels, like it'll take her days to travel like this much on the map. <laughs> like there's literally so many towns and landscapes and countries and just like throughout the series, you pretty much go everywhere on this map and even to countries outside of this map. Like it's so, so cool. Just like the world. And like the settings of this book is probably something that I really enjoy and probably something that really elevates my rating because if it weren't for just like the totally amazing like drafted like world building stuff like I wouldn't have liked it as much like the characters are okay I mean like there are some really great characters the characters are like you know not the best but like they're really really great like some of them are and then we have like great plot but like the world I think is probably the best element of this whole story and that's why I had to pick it for this question so yeah if you're just like looking for like a really good world I would recommend Throne of Glass um it's just something I can never like stop thinking about also her other book Akatar is really great and I cannot wait to see the world in Crescent City. Like, I don't know how she just like keeps track of so many different projects at once because she's constantly writing in so many. So it's like, oh my gosh, you are a queen. Sorry, J Mass continues to be the best. She always be the best. She remains the best. Alrighty, number six. Okay, Calabar, name your favorite villain. Calabar sounds like a really intimidating villain. So 
big brain. What is my favorite villain? That's a really great question. I'm gonna think about it. Honestly, I would probably have to say The Hunger Games and then what's his name? President Snow. I think he's just a really interesting character and the fact that we got to really explore his character in the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, I feel like that makes me even like him as a villain even more just because I got to like understand like his past and then like just seeing it, his arc almost even like his redemption arc kind of towards the end a little bit um but i just felt like he was such an interesting character that played a really big role in the tension of the hunger games and just to see his rule on the world and just see how he impacts the hunger games and how he he impacts like what is it, what is it called panem I'm so bad at Hunger Games. But yeah, seeing how he impacts Panem in the Hunger Games and just like how his character plays out, I think it's just really great. Um, he's just really up there villain. I think there's also a ton of great villains in the Keep Lost City series, but I don't want to just keep talking about it all the time because yeah, my channel is like about branching out from that one series. So yeah, um, there's just so many great villains that I could choose from. Also from the Unwanted series, we have like High Priest Justine. She was a great one. And just seeing how her character changes so much throughout the series, like literally, like literally and figuratively, like how her personality changes, how her physical character changes like it's just so cool like i don't know there's a lot of great villains basically and i i tend to love them <laughs> just because like they are really good at like you know changing up the story and spicing things up a little bit number seven benny name a book that is always there to get you out of a hard time benny seems like a great character then okay i'm honestly gonna have to go with harry potter by jk rowling and it's not necessarily the author that gets me out of the time, it gets me out of a hard time because J.K. Rowling gets me in harder times, but it's the series. Like it is Harry Potter himself. I just like to think of the Harry Potter series as it was, it was written by Harry Potter. It is an autobiography. Harry Potter wrote his own series, you know? It makes sense. And he wrote himself in third person because that's just how he kind of seems, you know? Anyways, I never really appreciated the series until it actually affected me in quarantine. This really got me out of like this seasonal depression, but it wasn't even seasonal depression. It was more of like quarantine depression of like just being inside a lot. As soon as I s kind of started Harry Potter, it just really affected my whole s kind of mindset on reading and it just changed the whole concept in my head of reading, if that makes sense. Like it just totally elevated my reading status and I feel like I've never been able to read quicker than I am now. Like this really upped my reading game. I feel Feel like and it just changed me as a reader and it just kind of really got me through quarantine like i said like i never have really felt the series as much as i had in quarantine like i just started liking this in quarantine so yeah and i'm never i'm not gonna let jk rowling get to me i'm probably gonna keep rereading the series probably like once every two years at the very least but um yeah i just whenever i need to get a good harry potter reread in i will and i will not let jk rowling stop me number eight luke name a character with a hard exterior i don't know what i just said there <laughs> name a character with a hard exterior but is actually Actually soft inside. Now I don't really know who has a hard exterior but is soft inside. I'm gonna go with Selena and I particularly put or I don't know what I'm saying. I particularly like picked the Assassin's Blade which was the prequel for a reason because in this prequel we see the Selena before she was really hit by like her betrayal and just so much that went through her. Like this was before she had to go through a lot and she, like just throughout her whole life I feel so bad for Selena because she had so much happen to her but this was before a lot of the trauma in her life like started and so like we could really see how she did have like a hard exterior like she was an assassin she was like really cunning and she was like really like kick butt character but she had a heart on the inside and we could definitely see that through her romance with Sam in this book and also just like with how she dealt with like things like topics like slavery and like um just equality and stuff like that and so I will say I don't recommend you guys read this book first even if it is a prequel I totally recommend you guys read the first three or four books of Throne of Glass no just the first three books of Throne of Glass before you read the prequel because there's a there's a just a different tone in this book that you cannot read first because if you know what happens to Selena before you read the series like there's no point in kind of uncovering that as you go so yeah i would just totally recommend you guys read this after the first three books if you guys are planning to read throne of glass or if you are in the middle of it um because then stuff that happens in this book kind of like makes changes that'll happen in the rest of the series but yeah there's just a total lot of good content in like exploration of selena's character in this book so i totally recommend you guys read this if you haven't already if you've read all the throne of glass books but you haven't read the prequel you know number nine cow name your favorite guilty pleasure book <laughs> yeah this one i was like looking over this on the like before I was filming, I was like, eh, I don't really get, like, I don't really have any guilty pleasure books because, you know, like, I just, like, I don't really 
care about what books I'm reading or like I don't really have any like um nervous things that I'm like allowed like to share with you like I don't really care about what people think about my own reading taste if that makes sense like I will share what I read and like I don't care what you don't think about that but I guess if I had to pick one I'd probably say like Sarah J Mass anything by her just because I know she is slightly problematic and then she also has like slightly like more mature like young adult themes in her books I don't know so I guess that makes it a little bit more guilty pleasure but like I just don't think that is what defines the books like um maybe like her adult book she's more into that but like I feel like with her young adult books I feel like like Throne of Glass and um especially Throne of Glass Throne of Glass and Akatar I feel like those are just really more about the plot than like about the romances and stuff although it's like there it is important but it's like not too important if that makes sense all righty number 10 name a book you love that you forget to talk about I always genuinely like seem to forget forget about the Mortal Instruments series or like the Infernal Devices series, like any of Cassandra Clare's books. Like I really love her books and I have like read almost 10 of her books, I think so far, or even more than 10. And it's just, I always forget to like, reread the series like I, I think I it's been like two years I think since I read um the Mortal Instruments and stuff but I, I need to like rebuy the books I think or not rebuy the books like buy the Mortal Instruments I need to get back into Cassandra Clare's writing I just feel like I forget all this, about these books all the time but yeah I've been like trying to make strides on actually like buying um the books and like actually like making an effort to rereading all of the Shadowhunter books because like for example I got the Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy book I got that for Christmas and then I just kind of forgot about it like I just forget a lot about Cassandra Clare's books because um even earlier this year like I remember talking about the Shadowhunter books a lot like in all my recommendation videos like my fantasy recommendations my winter recommendations but now I just don't seem to remember it um or recommend it really but like Cassandra Clare's books are good I mean there's some stuff that's problematic to them but um yeah I just I want to really get back into Cassandra Clare because like her writing is pretty good I mean it wasn't really great like to the start of her writing but, like as she went on through the years like her writing got a lot better all right number 11 Ethan name a character you want to go on a romantic room ride with I am not really like I said before I just don't really have like crushes on fictional people uh number 12 Natalie name a character who is proud of who they are what's a good one okay this needs to be important name a character who's proud of who they are What's a good person for this task? I'm gonna pick one from an audiobook I read recently, because I don't know. Arthur from What If It's Us. I just remember him being so, like, out there and outgoing. And just, like, when he was, like, he was trying to, like, make the most out of his life. And just, like, kind of be the best version of himself. I feel like he was just, like, such an inspiring character in the What If It's Us book. And I was just, like, I could relate to him a little bit. Because, like, he was just kind of, like, you know, trying to be just, like who he was, you know? I just like that. I just like when people are truly real. Like, I felt like a little bit of, like, eh energy from Ben, but, like, Arthur in What If It's Us was just, like, on top of it, you know? You know? I just love those characters. That took me a long time to think about because I had to really kind of talk about one that, like, like resonated with me about how real they were and, like, how proud of their self they were so yeah uh, i'd say arthur and that wraps up this tag all right that wraps up the tag thanks again to peyton reads for like including me in the tag like i know it wasn't like specifically like just her shouted me out like specifically but like just to see myself in the description was super validating and just like super making myself feel included in the community and i really appreciate you for that so thanks so much for the tag love you so much and uh thank you all for watching i hope you enjoyed this this was actually a really fun tag even though i never have watched the movies or really know who these characters are i think the questions were just so expertly crafted and it really made me like kind of go back on some books that i love like i know there's a lot of tags out there about like my worst books and like books that had great covers but really got bad plots but like i love these good tags like these feel good tags that are like actually about books that i think you guys will like you know so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it um i think i already said it but like this video subscribe to my channel for more guys we are actually even getting a lot more subscribers recently we're at like 1330 or 40 i don't know <laughs> okay. Hey, 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 hey. Ooh. I do, I do, I do, I do. Okay, anyways, um, yeah, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can, like, literally, as soon as I post, you can be like, hi. And I'll be like, hey, back. Because sometimes I don't respond, like, later. So the earlier you get to my videos, the earlier, or, like, the more chance I respond. Do that. Comment down below what did you think of the tag. Maybe put one of the questions. I'll have the questions in the description. Maybe copy and paste a question, then answer it for me. And then we can just discuss kind of, like, how our answers varied and differed. And, like, if I know about what you're talking about, or if you know what I'm talking about, or if you agree with or disagree with any of my opinions. Like, let's have a good discussion in the comments down 
down below. And I will see you guys on the next video. Thank you all so much again for your support. It really means the world. I'll leave the last video up there. Make sure to watch that. So if you haven't already, so you can get me some watch time. And I will see you in the next video. Love you so much. Bye. Happy reading. Ooh, that was not a kiss. <laughs> She's a Mona Lisa Everyone's lining up to see her There must be something bad